హలో ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు ఈసీ అకాడమీ ఇన్ దిస్ లెక్చర్ లెట్ అస్ అండర్స్టాండ్ మెమొరీ ఎలిమెంట్ యూజింగ్ సీమాస్ టెక్నాలజీ స్పెసిఫికలీ విల్ అండర్స్టాండ్ హౌ టు బిల్డ్ ఏ ఫ్లిప్ ఫ్లాప్ యూజింగ్ టూ ఇన్పుట్ మల్టీప్లెక్సర్ అండ్ టూ ఇన్వర్టర్స్ సో విల్ అండర్స్టాండ్ అబౌట్ ఫ్లిప్ ఫ్లాప్స్ విచ్ విల్ యాక్ట్ యాజ్ మెమొరీ ఎలిమెంట్ దిస్ ఫ్లిప్ ఫ్లాప్ ఈస్ డిజైన్డ్ యూజింగ్ టూ ఇన్పుట్ మల్టీప్లెక్సర్ అండ్ టూ ఇన్వర్టర్స్ these memory elements are fundamental concept that forms the backbone of registers latches and memory unit in digital systems so these flip flops are the fundamental concept that will form the backbone of registers latches and memory units that are used in digital systems first let us understand what is a memory element and why these memory elements are crucial in digital circuits in digital circuits memory element are essential components that are used for storing and retaining the data so memory element in digital electronics are essential components that are used for storing and retaining the data so one of the simplest memory element we can construct using basic cmos structure is flip flop and in this video we will focus on a flip flop design that uses two input multiplexer and two inverters take a look at this figure which shows our flip flop circuit here we have an input that is labeled as d which is data we want to store there is a control signal which is called as ld here ld represents load which determines whether we can write new data or hold the current state so load will act as control signal based on this control signal we can either write the data or we can hold the current state this circuit consists of two input multiplexer so one input is data one input is load and this multiplexer is designed using nmos and pmos and it also consists of two inverters and these inverters are connected in feedback loop this figure shows a simple d flip flop with one input which is represented by d and one control signal which is represented by ld and two outputs which is represented by q and q bar so q is the output and q bar is the complement of output so this circuit operates based on ld signal to control the data storage this circuit operates in two modes the first mode is a write mode and second mode of operation is hold mode first let us talk about write mode when ld is equal to 1 so when the control signal ld will be equal to 1 then the circuit will operate in write mode when the control signal ld is equal to 1 this one will appear across nmos as well as pmos so when the input to the nmos is 1 then nmos will be on and it will act as closed switch due to control signal 1 pmos will be off that will act as open switch since nmos act as a closed switch so the input across d will pass through nmos and it will be inverted across first inverter then again it is inverted at second inverter and the data will appear across q so when the control signal is 1 then nmos will be closed switch and pmos will be open switch so for example if d is having the data as 1 so this one pass through this nmos and then it will pass through the first inverter so output of first inverter 
will be 0 since it will perform the inversion operation and this 0 will pass through the second inverter and output of second inverter is 1. So, Q will be having the data as 1. So, output will be 1. When the input data is 0, this 0 will pass through this N mass and then it will pass through the first inverter. The output of first inverter will be 1 and this 1 will pass through the second inverter and the output of second inverter will be 0. So, the output will be 0. So, as you can observe here, when Q is equal to 1, Q bar will be equal to 0 and when Q is equal to 0 and Q bar will be equal to 1. That is why we have used two inverters so that we can have the complement value across Q as well as Q bar. So, this operation is useful when we need to update the stored value with a fresh data. Now, let us understand the hold mode when the control signal LD is equal to 0. So, when control signal LD is equal to 0, so this 0 will appear across input of N mass as well as P mass. So, due to this control signal, N mass will be off and P mass will be on. So, irrespective of what value we are having as input, the output will be the stored previous data. So, when LD is equal to 0, which means the control signal is equal to 0, the N mass will act as open switch and P mass will act as closed switch. So, which means whatever data that is stored at Q and Q bar, those data will be retained. So, which means the output will be connected back to itself. So, for example, if Q is having the value as 0, Q bar will be having the value as 1. So, value will be retained as it is. If Q is equal to 1, then Q bar will be equal to 0. So, these values will be retained as it is since there is no connection between input. So, we can say this feedback will maintain the stored value holding the previous state of Q while the input is do not care. So, these two mechanism will give the flip flop its memory capability. So, when LD is equal to 1, this memory unit will write new data and when LD is equal to 0, this memory unit holds the previous state. So, if you say it holds the previous state which will act as memory and these two inverters ensures that the signal is cleanly inverted and stabilized which will make the circuit a very good memory element. So, we have understood a simple circuit which demonstrate how memory elements can be built using fundamental CMOS components. This is about memory element using CMOS technology. Hope you have understood the topic. Thank you.